Welcome back to Learning Analytics Tools course. In this week, we will discuss predictive analytics. We saw in uh, first week that there are four levels of analytics in learning analytics and uh, we discussed uh, very briefly about descriptive analytics that is how to represent the pictures, how to represent the data you have. And the last three weeks we saw what is diagnostic analytics. We discussed uh, pattern mining, correlation and some clustering techniques. So hope you understood uh, how to perform diagnostic analytics. The next step is predictive analytics and that is the last step of this course. We do not uh, talk about prescriptive analytics in this course. So when we say predictive analytics, uh, it means it will measure what will happen next. Okay. Diagnostic analytics is what happened and uh, why it happened. Predictive is what will happen. If you know diagnostic analytics, you can create a relationship between uh, dependent and independent variables. You can use that relationship to create the future events that is called uh, predictive analytics. So you can use that relation to predict the future events. So predictive analytics also subsumes uh, diagnostic analytics, also the descriptive analytics. So always remember the first step is doing the descriptive analytics, looking at the figure, checking the outliers, there is a relationship from the plot, if it is possible. You know, if you have more than uh, say uh, 10 variables, it is not easy to plot. Uh, you can get the sense of each uh, variable data and this relationship, but you won't get a complete picture. Then you can do the correlation matrix, is there any relationship or you can see any regressions there. Then you go for the predict to create a model which can predict what will happen next. So predict analytics is to understand what might happen next and uh, this is based on the historical behavior of data is needed. So in order to predict what will happen next, we need a historical data to train the system, also test the system, right? And it involves uh, descriptive and diagnostic analytics like uh, we showed in the pre previous slide and uh, which means we have to describe the data, identify the patterns from the data or identify the correlation, relations from the data, then extend the pattern, whatever you identify the relation, extend it to the future events. So that is the idea of uh, predictive analytics. So it analyzes the current and historical data to predict the future events. Like uh, if you are teaching in a class uh, in this year, you might use the data from this year students, also the previous year students uh, in order to predict the final exam score because you do not have the exam score of uh, this year students because they are currently uh, studying. Also we will use machine learning and data mining tools to create the predictive analytics models. So the, for example, uh, other than in education domain, uh, this has been used widely for very other predictions, fraud deduction in a credit card or loans anti-spammers in email, you get uh, mails classified as spam or not spam, everything is use of predictive analytics. There are a few example domains here, uh, one is finance, uh, in finance it is to predict the credit card risk or loan risk in health sector in order to understand the insurers uh, predicting whether insurance will get sick zone or not so that we can uh, ask for more premium. And in telecom sector it is to predict which user will drop out or which user can go for the higher package, something like that. Also other than this domains, it is uh, used in many other domains, this is the main, main uh, uh, this is the main part of machine learning or this is where the machine learning predictive analytics has been used in all other domains. So we discussed that predictive analytics trigger and historical data to predict the future events. Let us talk about a educational domain, educational context. Uh, do we need historical data of a same learner or can you use data from other learners? Can you think of that? Also, if you can use the data from other learners, what are the restrictions? So we said that we need uh, historical data to predict so that we can predict the future events. So what is historical data? Is this historical data of the same user or other users? Think about it. After you uh, write down your answers, resume to continue. We may not able to collect enough data from the same learner uh, to predict the future events. You know the same, the learner would have joined newly in the first year of the college or the learner is the first time interacting with your intelligent tutoring system. You might have created a system to teach one specific topic. You will not get the same learners interaction system. But you can use the similar learners from the previous study or previous years of data, right? So what is the previous uh, learner should have? There should be similarity. What is the similarity is basically? Uh, there should be same domain. If you are collecting a student's data, 
uh, in uh, class say mathematics uh, of second year students you have to collect the last two years or last three years students who are done a mathematics in second year similar domain uh, or uh, similar environment interaction we give it should be a classroom environment or uh, the same kind of uh, teaching strategy has been used or uh, you are you are introducing a new strat new teaching strategy that is a variable one but you are using any everything else is same like a classroom and uh, students uh, pre and post test or the ability everything is same should make sure that is same by some statistical measures also the interaction time it is not that in one year student interacted with the system only for 30 minutes and uh, next year you are collecting data and want to predict where the student is interacting more than say one hour. So, make sure you have same domain similar type of interactions similar uh, interaction time with the system. So, that that kind of data can be used to predict the future events. And also the data collection uh, should be similar it is not that you are collecting extra data from the previous year to this year. But However, if your research question is valid, you want to collect new data to prove something extra, it is allowed. So, what I mean here is uh, if you want to use the historical data, please make sure that you have a similar domain, similar setup of study and a similar data collected. Uh, in uh, example, uh, for intelligent tutoring systems, uh, we might uh, create a system to teach a concept say Newton's law. And I have a some method to teach it and I also have a set of uh, assessment questions to assess the students. So, I created a system to teach Newton's law to say class 8 students ok. Or uh, now we collect data from say 100 students in a one school and uh, the students are interacting with the system you collected the data you are not doing any prediction of there because that is a new system right. So, pilot study or the first study you are doing you collected a system and you are going to establish whether the Newton's law system which you created as a learning gain compared to pre-test and post-test uh, whether student learned due to your system your intervention compared to a normal intervention like classroom education or some internet ok. Then you establish that the system is good. Now, you want to say going to create a predictive models to predict which user will struggle can you provide more hints on the user something like that. In order to do that use this 100 data and the students data and uh, you are trying to create a model to predict the interaction whether user will get the mark in assessment questions whether the user can understand the concept all these things you are trying to predict. So, when we go for the next set of study we have to make sure the users uh, or similar pre-test level run a statistical significance test to, to test whether these two users have the similar prior knowledge. If they have prior knowledge is same then uh, you check their interaction time if used one hour they should also use one hour and you do not introduce any new element here everything you make sure then you conduct a study to test whether your system works or not. By running multiple studies like that you can say that your system can predict the students interaction and that can be useful for the providing recommendations. It is not that uh, within 30 students first study itself we can provide hint and recommendation that may be from the hypothesis you have it is not from the data ok. That is what I want to establish in this particular activity. So, predictive learning analytics uh, is uh, also varied based on the stakeholders for example, learners uh, this will be helpful for feedback and suggestions to avoid failure in the learning goal. For a teacher uh, it will be in the dashboard uh, for like how learners performance vary and uh, can also help teacher that which learner having struggle or uh, so whether the lot of students in the class are not able to understand particular concepts. So, teacher can use that data to revise the teaching strategy all these things possible. Also in a content developers of uh, field learning systems they can use this uh, predictive analytics to provide recommendations hints or uh, adaptive content on that. In this video we discussed what is predictive analytics and what is the importance of historical data. Thank you.